Okay, well, thank everybody for joining here. I'm excited to, to present here today at the Solution Conference. And yeah, we'll be talking about how we can push the limits for Oracle EPM. So at this session, we're going to focus on workforce and sales planning and how we can set them on, on autopilot. So why workforce or sales planning? Well, honestly, I could have chosen pretty much um, any other planning process as well like, you know, projects planning, CapEx, profitability, but it's like that these two, because they're very common for EPM customers. And also, you know, keep in mind what we're, while we're going through these, there could definitely also be, be several other processes for, for which the same um, setup applies just as well, you know? And um, one more thing before we get started. So just a little intro into what this presentation is really about. So it's really talking about challenges related to, to four main areas. So one is data integration, right? How do we manage data and metadata? And also, you know, considering developing data integration strategy. So as you know, one of the things you're also pointing out is as our environments grow, as we add new solutions, right, to maybe smaller installation of EPVCS, we add new plant types, you know, there is a tremendous advantage of having an actual integration strategy in place. So we're going to talk a little bit about this here as well. And then overall, right, in order to set an autopilot, of course, it's about automation, right? How do we build end-to-end -end process that require nothing more than the push of a button? Uh, they're easy to understand, so we can follow a common process. And also they are robust. So that means even if an error occurs, uh, the process will be able to continue and execute the job successfully. So then the third item is data validation, right? So when we move data between different systems and apply mappings and you know maybe filter out certain values, uh, we definitely wanna make sure that the data between the source and the target ties and along the way, we're not running into any issues. So that's another part we're gonna talk about here. And then the last part is, you know, kind of like the life cycle management as part of this process. So, you know, once we have built the process, once we have tested it, you know, we need to be able to migrate it to an upper environment and make changes, understand what those changes are. And then also we need to know how they can be rolled back. And, you know, so if internal audit comes and asks about details about a process or change history, right? How do we answer those questions as well? Okay. Um, one thing up front before we go into the agenda here. So, um, if you have any questions, we're going to have a Q&A session at the very end, but if you have any other questions in between, uh, you can post those there. There's a little Q&A section where you can post your questions. I'll try to keep an eye on it. I can't promise I'll, I'll see your question right on time there, but we can definitely go into those uh, towards the end. But yeah, as I said, if I see, if I see your uh, question there, I'll, I'll try to respond if it, as long as it doesn't <clears throat> distract us too much from the overall topic. Okay, so yeah, let's go to the agenda. So <clears throat> we're going to start with a with a quick introduction. So you know what what fintech innovations is. We're going to talk a little about Ice Club, which is one of the products we're building at at fintech innovations, and. Then after the introduction, we're really going to talk about um, the the overview here of you know what are workforce and sales planning solutions, what do they usually look like, right? And then after that, we are going into I'm going to set the stage kind of for what we need in order to set EPM solutions on autopilot, right? So an important consideration there is to understand how EPM environments grow over time, right? So um, at first, these solutions are usually, you know, fairly simple, fairly easy to manage or more manageable least. And as, you know, as things start to grow, start to evolve, really this takes on a completely new dimension, right? It's, it's really a lot more systems we need to work with, a lot more things we need to consider if we want to build this process in a way that, that makes it easier to use. And so after we understand some of these basics, um, we are gonna talk about, um, yeah, gonna take a look at the, the data flow diagram, right? What, what does the data flow look like for both workforce planning and sales planning? And again, that could also be applicable to, to many other um, processes, whether it's projects or CapEx or, or really any, any other EPM related data flow. They're usually somewhat similar in terms of how they're structured, right? So that's kind of like based on some of the best practices that uh, we came up with over the years. And then the last part is really how do we change from operations to autopilot, right? How can we really make this happen so that, um, that these jobs really, really run the wide way? Okay. So 
next slide here, a quick introduction there to fintech innovation. So we basically have two components of fintech innovations. One part is the consulting part. I've been doing EPM, ERP, and BI consulting here for yeah, over 15 years now. Uh, worked as subject matter expert with uh, with Oracle Consulting, Big Four, Fortune 500 companies, and you know we act as their trusted advisor for data integration, automation. Uh, done a lot of work with account reconciliations, also, of course, planning and budgeting. And uh, another area I've done a lot of work with is related to drill through, right? Drill, how do you drill into all these various source systems and how do you make this more, more effective and more user-friendly? And then also data validation. So that's something we've done a lot of work with to help customers validate data if they were migrating, let's say, either between ERP systems, right, from one ERP to the next, let's say from a Oracle EBS to the ERP cloud, for example, right? There's a lot of data validation that needs to happen. So we helped to automate this, which, you know, saves a lot of time. Or, you know, of course, also, what if you go from HFM to FCCS or have any other type of data reconciliation, data validation uh, challenges as well. And um, yeah, so this is the one part, um, really the consulting side, maybe one thing, one thing to mention here. So um, for the last 10 years, I've, my main customer has been salesforce.com up in, in San Francisco. And so I've been involved in pretty much all of their projects since 2010, all of the EPM projects. And they've lots of really exciting uh, topics there that we've, we've done really like the core EPM part, but then also, you know, really interesting use cases around SBase, for example, where we use this for, uh, for other purposes also. Um, yeah, so so much about the consulting side. The other part that we're doing at FinTech Innovation is really um, software. So we built a solution called IceCloud, which stands for Integrated, Compliant, and Efficient Cloud. So really the goal is to you know seamlessly integrate, validate, and the financial data and make sure everything is compliant at any point in time. Yeah, so features of IceCloud is, is a very intuitive and code-free user interface, and you can access it on the web. You can monitor processes. You can run processes from the web, from your phone. Um, you know, then of course we're focusing on loading and extracting data and metadata from and to any source, basically whatever, whatever is needed there, the entire landscape of data integration. And then also areas like data validation, drill through, and how do we make error handling easier, which is also a big part for a topic, like how do we set process on autopilot, right? Benefits from that is, you know, you really can build these truly repeatable and robust processes. It's really important to understand, like, you know, everybody can build a, an automation process that will work, but the real value comes out of this, where if you can build this in a way where it's really robust, where you can even interact if there are some situations that are not expected, right? What do you do then? So build a robust process that can actually um, handle, handle certain errors that occur. And, um, you know, overall, yeah, it kind of also fits into the overall data integration strategy, right, which can reduce a lot of the effort and a lot of the cost involved with involved with with implementations and with ongoing support and maintenance, right. And then also, yeah, another part is you can really make sure your data is 100% validated. We can really do lots of checks in there to make sure everything ties. So really an integration tool built for finance and accounting based on, you know, several years of working with EPM solutions, understanding how can we make these processes easier to maintain. You know? But you know, this this presentation is not about IceCloud. I'm, I'll might mention here and there uh, how how they could work with that. But this is really more about the process you know, of how we can really. What are some of the things you want to consider there for um, putting these processes on autopilot? Okay, so um, here this is the second more internal slide here to fintech innovations or IceCloud. Um, you know, really IceCloud we started really here in the the EPM space, EPM cloud. This was really the first thing we did. You know, back in the day when there was really just flat file integration, everything is batch scripting. We just wanted a much better experience there. So we started with EPM cloud and then, you know, went into on-premise, you know, folks were asking, can we also do on-premise EPM, right? S-Base, HFM, FDME, DRM, right? So we added this. And then also, you know, we started adding, you know, one customer was asking about Planful, we added this. And along with that, Anaplan, Blackline, Workiva, OneStream uh, recently, right? But then also, of course, outside of EPM, you know, we're connecting to Salesforce or Oracle CX, right? The the sales cloud equivalent from Oracle, uh, HR solution like ADP, Workday, right? A bunch of ERP systems, whatever is out there. And then also, you know, database like Amazon Redshift, Snowflake, right? All of these we have. And, you know, if there's anything ever missing, um, 
all of our integrations, all of all of these connect connectors are built on top of like a very extensible framework. So if anything missing, we've yeah, we typically add new adapters in, in as quickly as a couple of days there. So yeah, that's that's just in a nutshell how how IceCloud works. And especially I don't know if you're familiar with EPM Automate, for example, or, or other, you know, how scripting works in FDME. Really the idea is maybe there's a way how you can make this more flexible, less coding and you know fill some of the gaps in terms of usability so really really nice way of, of working with this and it's also a lot of fun to work with this by the way <laughs> all right so cool so let's get started here right so when we talk about sbase or pbcs use cases right so the common the common use cases um this is always kind of like you know around fp and a right that's always the starting point you have your p and l maybe balance sheet maybe something related to cash flow but you know gross margins pretty typical at revenue cost center planning right capex or projects also some of the, the common uh things that we're looking at um so one thing really to point out here, and this was also something that um, in the planning roadmap session yesterday from uh, Mark Seewald and Mark Rinaldi from Oracle, they were mentioning that there's this change that they're observing that we're really going a lot more into, you know, from regular FP&A, we're going more into what they call XP&A, kind of like an extended uh, planning and analytics, which is going more into, you know, um, the operational side of the plans, right? And how do these operational sides, how do the operational plans then, you know, also um, integrate with, with the regular financial plans, right? Um, yeah, so really the idea is how can we spread out, how we give more um, business functions the ability to use a, a planning tool like PBCS. And so, you know, of course there's strategic modeling also involved in that workforce planning, right? That goes into the HR space. Um, then profitability and cost management, right? It can be used for certain departments for sure. Um, you know, I think also, of course, I think in IT, IT is an area where more and more those planning solutions are deployed. Also sales planning here, and this is also one thing I'm gonna talk about a little bit. So there's a new solution from Oracle called sales planning. What does this do? How does this work? And what is the specific uh, gap that this fills? And, but, you know, there are also other use cases, like custom use cases. One thing that was really, interesting a few years ago we actually implemented a solution for the accounting standard 606 as it was was about revenue recognition that's something we implemented at salesforce and it was really interesting to see how you can actually leverage a platform like sbase or you know you could probably do this similarly in in pbcs as well uh, we can use this to really build creative and custom solutions to, um, to really address business processes that are yeah that are not um, that there is no out of the box solution for, right? And so still S-based planning, right? Very powerful solution for all type of your business processes there. Okay, so uh, that being said, let's take a look here at the, yeah, so the two areas we wanna focus on here, right? Is workforce planning and sales planning, you know? So starting with workforce planning, right? Um, sure some of you are probably familiar here with how this works with workforce planning right the objective is we want to plan and understand employee cost and headcounts right and so you know what are some of the keep of capabilities of course we want to plan headcount we want to plan employee compensation by employee and or job code right or position um budget future headcounts and the related expenses with that and how can we execute um you know complex employee calculations so uh, where the workforce module has several uh, several features there out of the box for sure that, that can be leveraged there as well. And, you know, the overall benefits is how do we improve the planning process around accuracy and accountability, make co collaboration between finance, HR, and the line of business users better, and have the ability to perform what-if analysis to support the key workflow decisions there. Now, to let all this flow into the plan. So you might have been familiar with this from from implementation of the project you've been on sales planning here is um, a new solution um, as i mentioned so really the idea here is to improve overall sales execution and operational efficiency All right so what does this mean or how is this how is this implemented so i mean one part is you know key features of this of course is always like the revenue or gross margin planning right that's that's one thing but um you know maybe one thing to mention your oracle has also pushed more and more around the predictive analytics right how can we use drivers or maybe historic data or market data to make these predictive predictions uh, easier right and then also along with that um 
you know, that's yeah, really this new module, the sales planning module, which is really about setting quotas the right way, aligning territories and accounts, and defining compensation plans. So with that, um, you know, really one of the, the struggles in some sales organizations is, you know, if, you know, salespeople are compensated based on the revenue they bring into the door, right? And if, if there are certain, if somebody lives in a certain area and owns a certain territory, it will be much easier potentially, right? So hypothetical speaking, it could, in certain cases, it can be much easier to actually achieve your quota, right? Versus there are other territories where it's a lot harder to get there. And so how do you make this more fair? How do you make sure that the payout's more controlled and it's just a fair process where, where nobody feels like left out, right? And it's it's a fair way of setting this up. So that's one of the big uh, part there for, for the sales planning solution, right? And so with that is all about planning and forecasting and analyzing your sales planning targets and really having the ability to optimize territories right through account segmentation and how you assign the resources and then yeah how to plan the quota and really also have of course lots of scenario based collaborative forecasting there right which especially these days is just really really important um Okay, so next slide here is giving us a little overview, right? What are we looking at? So let's say we're taking an HR application or a CRM application, right? Taking data from any of those systems um, or, you know, it could also be market data, right? So this is really what I mentioned briefly about predictive planning, right? What do we have there for market data? So this could be something like Department of Labor Statistics, could be commodity prices, oil, gas, precious metals, right? Um, currency exchange rates, maybe COVID cases, case counts by state or county, right? Does that have an impact on my sales performance? Does it impact restaurants or, or you know, vacation spots or whatever like that, right? Um, recently, you know, temperatures or fires, right? Does that have an impact on something? You know, I think this, this seems to be coming more and more here, especially here, you know, I live in California. We've, we've had struggles with that for, for years and it's, it's just this year is to, that nothing has ever been like this, right? So I don't know, it might be things that, that impact that as well, right? And so these are all things that could be part of a scenario modeling, but you can maybe also pull those directly into your, into your systems, right? And really what we're looking here is, right, so we want to look at what do we do with data, right, our, our HR data, our headcount data, our open positions, or our sales planning data, right, um, our pipeline data, for example, what do we do with metadata, right, how do we make sure, in order to really set these process on autopilot, we need to make sure that our metadata is fully integrated. Right, and can we trigger this from these source systems, or can we, um, you know, if there is anything missing, can we pull, you know, additional additional information from our source systems to make this process completely seamless, where we don't need to worry about um, managing our metadata too much. Everything works automatically, right? Then potentially smart lists. I'm going to talk about this for a moment um, in one of the next slides, um, but otherwise anything related to automation really right daily weekly loads right so um, recently there was there's a couple of new podcasts out there um, for, for EPM and one of them um, the Matt Bradley from Oracle was invited and he was he was also talking about kind of like this X, XP and A he didn't mention it specifically but said we're really doing a lot more operational planning with this really the frequency one thing is the frequency of the data loads, but then also the frequency of the plant cycles of the forecasts, right? Some companies out there are doing weekly forecasts, especially in a, in a time of uncertainty, right? So that's definitely something to consider. How do we run business rules? How do we prepare forecasts, right? Um, any outbound feeds, right? All of these considerations and also data validation is another part here. All right, so next slide, um, just real quick about some of the things that we're we're seeing in general, right, with um, with, with uh, challenges for IT and business teams at EPM space. You know, it's always like, how do we integrate on-premise and cloud applications, right? An important part if you really want to set all these processes up to run on autopilot, right? How can we maybe reduce complexity of coding, right? It's a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of code involved. It's, you know, sometimes not as secure as it should be. Sometimes it's, it's tricky to, um, tricky to, uh, maintain or make changes, right? Uh, lots of error prone manual tasks are still there, right? For that automation is also a great, great way of dealing with this. You know, how do we prepare the data, for example, right? How do we do this the right way? Uh, missing transparency, um, inconsistency, 
with data across different applications, how do we make sure that all of our systems are really exactly in sync? And, um, you know, knowledge transfer, right? If we have a new employee or somebody is on vacation, how do we know these processes also run in case something ever goes wrong, right? And then, yeah, time and effort for troubleshooting data issues, right? This is still uh, a big topic, I feel like, from, from talking to many customers. Um, how can we make this easier, right? And then maybe not so much around planning and budgeting, but, you know, once we go into FCCS or account reconciliations, right, risk of audit and compliance, right? How do we make sure we know exactly what has changed and we can we can deliver answers to our audit and compliance team as well. And then, um, you know, cost for support and maintenance is a big part. Uh, and then also, yeah, overall the goal is, right, how can we, how can we be less distracted from business strategy and put the focus on that. Okay, so the next slide, um, I'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, the big part here is this is kind of like a nice overview, right? So if you want to download that presentation or, you know, you can also contact me about it, uh, I can send you a copy of this. So really this is a nice overview of what it is that you often used here for workforce and sales planning solutions, right? What are the data sets, where they have accounts, what are the frequency, uh, how do we access the data? What are some of the challenges, right? That we're running into. Um, then, um, you know, metadata, we have dimensions, something we have smart lists, right? For automation, yeah, how do we build this whole process? A lot of times, you know, we're loading to maybe to the workforce cube directly, but then also to a financials cube, right? How do we make sure we can streamline this? And, um, you know, what do we want to integrate market data? What if, how do we run a clear calc or transfer processes, right? Metadata management, or how can we, for, for HR process, how can we run bulk operations? You know, for one customer, we implemented a solution once. Uh, they, they had like so many business rules they needed to run because they had lots of seasonal employees and they didn't want to go through each web form, enter the information, you know, 50 times. Uh, we built a process actually where it was running those in bulk, right? It was a nice automation process. And um, yeah, and overall, you know, maybe also what's the feedback loop, right? So one thing is we're talking a lot about getting data into an EPM application, but what about, um, you know, what about also sending that data back into other systems, right? So right back, or it could be, you know, with, on the FCCS part, can we get the journals back into our EAP systems, right? Or here with HR, can we push the data back into a talent management system to, to communicate with, with the talent management system and, and have those two more linked together, right? And then, yeah, a couple other things, validation, right? How do we validate data between the source and the workforce application, the source and the financials, and um, you know, workforce module and, and the, those two uh, plan types possibly. Uh, how can we validate metadata, right? Do we have alternate rollups? Are they all in line? And how can we have control totals, row counts, level zero and summary level information for, for those validations? How do we know that the data really ties both on the level zero as well as maybe in a summary level as well, right? So, um, yeah, administration, how can we manage the variables? How can we prepare the forecast? Where do we actuals get copied? How do we update the rates? How do we prepare for what if scenarios, right? Scenario modeling. And um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't want to go into a lot more detail here. I think just this is something we can talk about for a while. And actually, we also will be talking about this in more detail. Um, really, the core areas, right? As I mentioned, if you want to set your EPM process on autopilot, seamless integration, um, with your source systems, especially the cloud-based ones, right? Because those are a little, little trickier to accomplish than others. Um, automate metadata management, right? Because that's if whenever you have, you know, a new employee or you have a new customer in your sales solution, right? You want to make sure you can automatically get them into the system. Um, and, uh, you know, end-to-end -end automation and also data validation, right? From the source to the cubes, across cubes, and uh, across the data preparation and mapping steps as well. Okay, so um, before we go into um, really the, the data flows here, one, one thing, right, I mentioned earlier, kind of like this data integration strategy, right? What does this, what does this mean and why do we need to think about something like this? So really what, what happens with all the EPM projects is, right, or well, at least the good ones, let's say that, right? I mean, if you have a, a good implementation partner, right, you will be able to build a solution that really supports your business processes. And a lot of those are really, really successful, right? We have a few customers right now, um, they're, they started with the first phase and, you know, it took some time to get used to it, to really figure out how do we, how do we work with this, you know, and, and how can we get help with some of the questions we still have. But once you're done with this, chances are you really have a very, very solid um, 
project there, right? And, and this, the overall business team is very happy with it. And you think about, okay, how can we expand this, right? We start with one simple project, maybe just getting GL data into a planning application. Um, then we start project two, project three, project four, everything's great. Project five, and all of a sudden you go from like a very simple, you know, on the left-hand side, you see it's very simple to maintain this to like a solution that's complete spaghetti bowl, right? You end up in a mess. And so really, if there's a good chance that your environment really grow tremendously and you end up with something like this, right? I'm sure some of you on the call have probably experienced exactly this. How can we make this better? And um, so, by the way, down here is a link to a blog post that I, I posted a, a few months ago where this is kind of um, pulled from, right? So let's say we, you know, kind of going through these phases just to see how it gets there, right? So we start with something simple, loading general ledger data to a planning application, right? And often there would be FDME or data management used, right? And so, you know, I've, I've used FDME data management in the past a lot. I also used ODI a lot, um, you know, Oracle Data Integrator, which is a little more flexible tool, but not as user-friendly. Um, but so, you know, you have these FDM data load rules. The thing is they, they're not really built for is it's not really a very strategic approach. It's more like a point-to-point -point integration approach, you know, which works fine, but, uh, you know, especially for smaller implementations. But even here, you know, like this, these errors that you see, like this looks like it's maybe one integration. Actually, there could be more multiples, right? It could be, you know, probably you're loading FX rates or statistical accounts or have any other supplemental files, right? And so then there could also be several mappings that are required for this, right? Because you have, you have different ways of mapping some of these files. Um, and then, you know, how do we manage these processes, you know, timing, when is the data available, right? What other dependencies are there of, of other processes, maybe, which variables need to be updated, right? All of these are questions where it already goes towards, okay, we should start thinking about automating this. But then, you know, to automate them, a lot of times the only option there is, is hundreds of lines of code, right? And if you have multiple processes with hundreds of lines of code, at some point, it's just harder to manage, right? And, um, you know, and if, if you throw like any cloud or non-supported third-party systems in the mix there, it's starting to become an even bigger problem to, to integrate those. But still, I mean, phase one, right, it's fairly, fairly low integration challenge. There really isn't much going on yet. But then, you know, let's say, okay, first, you know, first project was great, really successful. Now, I don't know, maybe add another ERP system or another source, right? We want to start writing back data to the source system, right? So something like this. Um, it's, uh, you know, starting to come a little bit more complex, but, you know, still pretty manageable. Um, you know, one thing you had mentioned for the diagram, so I removed these icons for data management or FDME just because, you know, you'll see as, as this grows, there would just not be enough room for that. Um, but, you know, basically each one of these lines, right, could represent multiple integrations with FDM, for example. And so let's say, let's talk about this, right? That's probably a lot um, of how... You, probably what your environments look like, where you have different sources, you have different targets, right? And you need to load the data to all these systems. And so this by itself is one of the things that that's just not a really good practice because, you know, you say you pull data from your EOP, you load it into planning, you load it into analytics cube and into the consolidation application. Well, all of these are possibly pulled at slightly different intervals and you might have slightly different data there. Now, and then also, you know, you need to transfer data in between those. So you see like the number of errors is really growing rapidly here, right? So this is really where we, it's really starting to become challenging here. And this is really where an integration strategy can really save you a, a lot of time here. Now, and so, you know, then let's say this is the, the, the situation that we're talking about here, right? Adding CRM, adding HR systems, right? Pulling data from there, pulling headcount data, right? Getting into the planning cube or, you know, maybe also getting headcount into consolidation cube, right? And then we have the sales data goes into planning and, and maybe reporting cubes, right? We're pulling billings, backlogs from the ERP. We're pulling sales pipeline data from Salesforce or sales cloud or whatever other HR, uh, sales system you have there, right? Maybe we have a challenge management system and it's all of a sudden it's starting to become a mess, right? So these arrows really are not even enough to show how many integrations there are. And again, right, the integration strategy will help to make this a lot easier. And we're almost there where you can see how this really gets much easier. Here, let's add one more layer there, right? The last project is we want to get some outbound feeds. We want to push data to its external systems, right? So again, integration challenge, very high, right? Lots of these integrations, right? And um, it doesn't get better, right? So with this, it's really important to think about what could be an integrate better strategy begin. So here really, right? So this is kind of like, you know, let me go 
back, right? So here we have all these different connections. Well, we could also set this up in a way of more kind of like a hub in the middle, right? Where it's one environment or one, one you know, kind of like the, the data transformation hub, right? Where we pull data in from this ERP, right? One time, it's all about, let's do this one time, right? We don't need to pull three different extracts to populate S-based planning and HFM, right? Or FCCS or whatever. So one extract from here, we have consistent mapping, centralized mapping. We push those into these different applications, right? This will save so much time, reduce so much cost and effort for implementation, maintenance and support, right? Really simplifies these solutions a lot. And, you know, troubleshooting and, and support, like, yeah, it is a lot less complex. The complexity is a lot less that you have to deal with. Also data validation, right? So I don't need to, let's say I want to validate my data. Well, you know, if I pull data from ERP system once, and then I have different numbers in S-Base and planning, I know for sure that it has something to do here with this section only, but my ERP data is the same, so that will not impact anything, right? So it just makes things a lot easier. And yeah, also the knowledge transfer is a whole different ballgame because it's a much more consistent approach, right? It's not like everything is done you know, slightly different, I mean, not that it's always happening, but, but you know, systems grow. I, I've built many of those in the past. And, you know, at some point you just realize, hey, they, they weren't built quite the right way, right? And that's how you come up with, with those type of best practices where you realize, hey, yeah, this will totally work. And, and you know, work that over and over again with our customers, really, really a nice way of, of really, you know, building a, a strong foundation there now. Okay, so let's go back here to workforce planning, right? Getting started here, workforce, we're talking about, yeah, extracting, um, and loading headcount information, right, for existing employees, but then also for open positions from talent management um, positions there as well. And, um, you know, how to identify missing members, how can we manage smart lists possibly, how do we do calculations, uh, how do we transfer data between the financials cube and, you know, some of the other, um, yeah, data transfer requirements that we have, uh, how do we validate source and target data as well as across the cubes and uh, how do we prepare forecasts, right? These are some of the things that we need to consider there. And so, all right, let's get started, right? So here's the data flow. You have your HR application and in here, right, we have ADP, we have, uh, you know, Workday, these are two big ones, HCM, of course, right? And then there are some, Taleo is for you know, talent management, so it's job wide. I think Bamboo HR also has both of these modules. And, or it could be a custom HRS or just a file or whatever, right? Um, so we wanna get this over into PBCS, probably into a workforce cube and into a finance cube also. So let's see, we're gonna pull the data from the source, right? Gonna extract the raw data here. Now, after that, we're gonna prepare the mapping. We're gonna make some modifications, some transformations. We can apply some mappings, right? A lot of times these are not overly complicated, um, but yeah, we definitely need to do a few things here to enrich the data a little bit. And then, so here at this point, right? One thing we usually like to do is we wanna take a look at, okay, so before I try to load this data into my application, do I have all of these members, right? And how can I how can I do this, right? I mean, one way, of course, I could push it in there and then see, okay, what fails, but that's not really putting it on autopilot, right? So we need to figure out a way how we can get the existing members and the the smart lists and how do we, yeah, how do we how do we do all this um, so we can identify what these kickouts are, and then once we identify what the kickouts are, well, let's take those and let's add those back into the application before we even load the data, because this way we can be sure that our data will not uh, will not error out, right? Our data loads. So let's say we pulled out the information, we identify what are the kickouts, we uploaded those to PBCS. Now, next step is let's load the data, right? It might be a step involved to identify what are any of the changes. You know, if you just want to do an incremental load, although they definitely has some some drawbacks there um but you know maybe we, instead we want to clear the data right so you want to before you clear the data then you load it into workforce cube you aggregate the workforce cube maybe you load your your headcount numbers right the statistics here into the finance cube right again aggregate this and you can you know transfer data in between those cubes right so that's that's core the core of what this process looks like so now one thing that i found really helpful is to be able to add some data validation parts there. Okay, so how do we how do we make sure our data is valid? So, first step is here we're looking at two things mostly mostly row counts, right? So when we pull the data out of the source and we pull it here into our raw data 
area, kind of like a staging area, something like this, or, you know, also what, I guess what data management does, right? Uh, you just have the place where you can start massaging your data to get it into the right right place, start to prepare it the right way. So we're looking at row counts to make sure, yes, all the records from the source came over in here. And then in addition, once we really start preparing this, we can also look at here the control totals, right? What is our total? The data that we had in the raw data set, does that match what we have uh, within our enriched data set, right? With the map data. And so that's that's the first step to do this. That definitely helps to identify um, you know, if there is anything strange happening. And then the other part really here is how do we how do we you know link the our PBCS application, how do we link this to our source system, right? How can we have validation reports here? How can we go to, you know, level zero, um, either on a level zero intersection level or maybe on a summary level, right? Maybe both actually, you can also do both, right? To see, um, are these systems in sync? Are there any differences? Or here, you know, let's say you have finance and work, the, in the finance cube, you have headcount, you have also, you know, your employees here in workforce. Like, is there any difference for any reason between departments? Or do you have your statistics correct for saying, hey, this is a, a full-time employee or a part-time employee or, you know, what, what are the different account classifications that you have? How do you make sure this is really 100% correct, right, depending on what mappings you have there? And so having these validation reports built in here, that's really a, a key part, right? And this is also something where, you know, looking at this image that, that looks very similar to some of the process we built with IceCloud, for example, right? We really have all this and you can do the roll counts, you can do the control tools, you can have those validation checks out of the box really quick to set up, right? But again, yeah, you don't have to go with a solution like this. You can also somehow custom build that to some degree, but these are really some of the main features here needed in order to now to make these processes, you know, to really have the trust that everything works, right? I mean, you can automate this, but you know, if I don't want to validate the data all the time, I need to have here these validation reports to make sure that my data is, is correct. So um, here, let's switch over to the sales planning process. <laughs> you might have noticed there's not a whole lot changing, right? Our source application change, our target application change. You know, of course, there, there are a few more things, of course, that are happening there. But really, the idea is, you know, we're pulling different types of data out here. So the way how we pull the data, what we do with the data, that's different, right? That's what I had on, on this matrix slide more um, that's more also a question here. Like, I don't know. Hey, let's say you have the average selling price, right? And maybe a quote line, quote line items. How do you project those out over the different months into the future, right? Um, these are some of the challenges there. Or overall, yeah. How do we get, for example, a crawl chart to work, right? How do you know what is your quarterly uh, situation there for billings and backlog, or you know any any other uh, any similar activities there? But again, right? Very similar process. Look, preparing the data, clearing data, reloading data, aggregating it, handling metadata, validations, right? And so this is really the same thing, whether you work with workforce or planning or really any of the other projects too. Right now, we also just started a, you know, one of our customer there, I don't know how many projects they've done by now, but, you know, project is one of the new one, the implementation projects and sales planning at the same time. And, um, you know, we're doing exactly that same process here for them in, in both cases. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about some of the considerations, right? So when we talk about putting these processes on autopilot, right? How do we manage security? Security and access are two key considerations, right? Let's talk about data. So you know, talking with uh, talking about HR data, right? We're talking about um, employee-specific information, right? Personal identifying information, right? PII. Um, how is that data managed securely, right? A lot of times. Data is um, data is sent via email and Excel files are stored on a shared drive, right? Not not really the best approach to do this. So you know now everything's talking about integration technology-wise, right? Most of these integrations work with, with like web services, right? If you have a good way to integrate there, right? iCloud, for example, makes this really simple. You can pull data from any of these systems, right? And a lot of times they use complex authentication methods like OAuth two and or, or bearer tokens or something like this, right? You need to set those up. You need to make sure you have everything, all of these credentials, all these certificates there in the right way. And, um, you know, those web servers usually return XML or JSON data. So it's not delimited files like a tap delimited or CSV or whatever. So they usually kind of look like this here, what you see on the, on the right-hand side. So 
how do we how do we go about this? How do we pull those in, right? And so that's really the part where we want to build a one-click integration, right? You want to pull the data from the source. You want to upload it, the HR file to your inbox. You want to load your HR data and then at the end also delete that file, right? Because you don't want to leave your, leave your confidential information there sitting in your cloud inbox, right? For everybody to see. Okay. And so, yeah, here again, consideration, right? Integration side, we talked about this rather than having this, right? We can just go to more of a more of a strategy here that really has a lot of advantages from a cost and time savings. Um, okay, so now let's talk about the part where we are going here into, um, you know, what 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 is it to get from operations to to autopilot, right? So metadata is a big part, right? How do we get to metadata? So. Um, First, we want to determine any any kickouts, right? In order to load position, we need to determine what are the kickouts, and we need to identify the positions and their parents. Uh, we need to load those position members. We need to refresh the cube, track the status, uh, check, you know, and then send notifications of, of what's going on in, in a process like this. You know? um, and then here, another part is how do we set or derive, yeah, actually, we want to set as few variables as possible and maybe derive the other variables, right? So for example, you know, one thing that we usually do with customers is we have, um, you know, idea of a GL close period. This is what drives pretty much everything. Maybe you have a plan scenario, something like this also, but you can derive, based on these few variables, you can derive pretty much everything else. You can derive the period from there. You can derive the year, maybe we're just prefixing FY. Uh, you can figure out what's the next period or what's the prior period, what's the next year. Um, start and end dates you can derive here from from a, a value like this, right? So I mean that, that's something we do a lot with with IceCloud there, where you can just define variables that are really smart, and you set up one variable and several others. They just basically are derived off of a one original value, or you know you can set your period ranges whether it determines which months do you load actual data to. You know January through December, uh, so September for example. Then forecast you just take the other months, right? You can derive all of this with some a little bit of logic there uh, for setting up variables in a in a good way. And so that makes it very easy to make sure you don't have any mistakes in there by by chance, right? Here, another part is, you know, how do we ensure data accuracy, right? And so that's what we mentioned before, right? We have, what are some of the indicators for accuracy or integration, integrity issues um, during the data preparation part? So uh, that's where we talk about, you know, control totals, uh, record counts, right? How do we get those right? Then how do we validate, how do you do validations on a summary level, right? How we will know that the, the salary headcount totals are correct by entity and cost center. And uh, how do we do something similar here for, you know, billings and backlogs, right? Does a bookings match up billings and backlog? And you can do this on a higher level or you can also do this on a lower level, right? So again, this is one of those things where IceCloud adds a lot of functionality there. And um, but really, um, yeah, the idea is, right? If you have any type of those checks, even if they're not as elaborate, um, as long as you can check those intermittently and have a few final checks, you know, you'll be able to identify so many problems way before your users do, right? So that's always a great thing there as well. Um, yeah, otherwise here, operations, right? How long does it take to identify and resolve problems, right? And then how can you make, if you find an issue, right? How do you, how do you make these issues? How do you resolve those? How can you add additional logic that next time takes care of those issues? You know? And then one more thing there also is migration process, right? How long do we migrate? How long does it take to migrate? And then is there a change log? You know, have you ever wondered what caused your data to change, right? Why do we, why is my data different now? What has changed in my system? And so, you know, how can you find out what's changed, right? And, you know, maybe one more reference there to IceCloud where we have really these, these steps there set up where you can find out exactly what has changed over time. You can roll changes back, right? And then here on the right-hand side, it's kind of like an overview how you could see those processes aligned there in a nice visual way, right? Where you can see exactly what are the different steps, what happens there, how much data is processed, right? All of those things. Okay, so quick summary, um, access to, yeah, you want to make sure you have right access to your HR and sales systems or, you know, any other type of system. If we talk processes outside of HR and sales, how do we manage our metadata automatically, right? Big part, how can we set and derive those variables, right? How do we reduce like the manual updates are needed and really have smart variables that populate all of the substitution variables in, in PBCS or FCCS, wherever we are, right? Let's look at the centralized mapping approach where we have, you know, one, maybe one mapping per data source rather than, 
you know, multiple mappings, one for PBCS and FCCS and SBASE or whatever, right? And yeah, data accuracy is a big part of it overall. Yeah, how can we reduce the overall uh, needs here for build and support efforts, right? How can we make this easier? And then really the goal is how do we focus on building better solutions for our customers, right? That's one big part there also, because, you know, if we build great solutions that are easy to maintain, we can, we can build a lot more of these great solutions and support our business in a much better way, right? Um, yeah, so these are all considerations here. You know, think about maybe looking at an integration strategy makes it easier, but otherwise I think the building blocks there, otherwise that's exactly what you need in order to, to automate your, your HR and sales processes or any other ones, right? And um, yeah, so with this, we're here at the, the end of the presentation. Um, I didn't see any questions come through, but let me know if anything, if you have any questions based on what we just discussed here. Otherwise you can also, you know, down here's my, my contact information. You can either shoot an email or send me a text or something. I can talk about this in, in more detail. Okay, great. Thank you so much for a great presentation. Yeah, yeah I don't, I don't see any questions. And again, just email him if you guys have questions, he can help you that way. But um, thank you so much for attending. And again, great presentation. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Tisha.